Hello everyone. Good evening. Today we will see Oncological Emergencies Part 1. In Oncological Emergency, it can be related to tumor itself or it can be due to adverse treatment effect that can occur early in the therapy that result in oncological emergencies. So it is an adverse treatment effect that can occur early in the therapy. So oncological emergencies can be classified as three types as metabolic hematological and third space occupying lesions so among metabolic we have hyperuricemia, second hyperkalemia, third hyperpospatemia, fourth it can be hypocalcemia, fifth it can be hyponatremia. Among hematological, we have hyperleukocytosis, second it can be anemia, third thrombocytopenia, fourth DIVC and fifth it can be neutropenia. Among space occupying lesions, we have SVC syndrome, second spinal cord compression, third pericardial tamponade, fourth it can, can have paste ICP. Okay. In this video, we will discuss tumor lysis syndrome in uh, fully. So, first is tumor lysis syndrome. So, this tumor lysis syndrome is a biochemical syndrome that can occur. It is a biochemical syndrome that can occur spontaneously due to the tumor itself or it can be secondary to treatment induced breakdown of malignant cells tumor induced breakdown of malignant cells okay so when the malignant cells break down so when the cells break down all the inter intracellular content so the intracellular content comes out into the circulation so the what are the intracellular content is phosphate potassium and the nucleic acid these are released into the circulation. So the nucleic acid is broken down by the enzyme xanthine oxidase into uric acid. So this leads to hyperuricemia. Okay. 
and hyperphosphatemia and hyperkalemia so secondary effect of this hyperphosphatemia it leads to hypocalcemia it is hypocalcemia it is because of hyperphosphatemia okay so this can lead to the nucle uh, this is this electrolyte imbalance that is this diselectrolytemia with inflammatory markers that is cytokines are also being increased this can lead to the inflammatory effect of cytokines these predispose to acute kidney injury so it predisposes to acute kidney injury this can also affect central nervous system and cvs next we'll go to diagnosis what is the lab criteria for tumor lysis syndrome so lab criteria for tumor lysis syndrome it is more than or equal to 25 percentage increase from baseline in more than or equal to two of following serum parameters so there should be a more than or equal to 25 percentage increase from the baseline in more than or equal to two of the following serum parameters okay it's more than 25 percentage increase so the serum parameters you can remember it as 8 7 6.5 and 6 so 8 here is more than 8 serum uric acid less than 7 serum calcium more than 6.5 phosphate more than six is potassium okay this is the lab uh, criteria for tumor lysis syndrome this can occur three days prior or seven days after the initiation of therapy so this can occur seven days after the initiation of therapy This diselectrolytemia, this can lead to seizures. So, diselectrolytemia can lead to seizures, arrhythmia and acute kidney injury leading on to oliguria. So, this is termed as clinical tumor lysis syndrome the tumor lysis syndrome if it is diagnosed in the lab stage it can be managed and it can prevent the clean this clinical consequence can be prevented if it is identified earlier in this lab stage okay next we'll go on to prevention prevention is a key to the tumor lysis syndrome so First treatment is hyperhydration. Hyperhydration you start with 2.5 to 3 liters per meter square per day or it can be 1.5 times of the maintenance. Okay. This should be carried out in a, a plane saline with dextrose containing solution that is it can be d half ns or it can be d quarter ns it should be without potassium and calcium in the fluid okay and while giving hyperhydration 
you have to monitor the urine output. So the urine output here, it should be 4 to 6 ml per kg per hour in children less than or equal to 10 kgs. No, it should be you should maintain at 4 to 6, 6 ml per kg per hour if the child is less than 10 kg or it should be the target should be 80 to 100 ml per meter square per hour. This is the urine output you have to monitor. The second treatment is, for, sorry, second method of prevention is you have to use xanthine oxidase inhibitor. The xanthine oxidase inhibitor is allopurinol. This allopurinol should be used at the dose of 10 mg per kg per day in 3 divided doses. If the child has renal injury, then you have to reduce the dose to half. Then a dose of allopurinol is halved or the other alternate is you can use the tablet Fiboxostat at 10 mg once daily. Okay. This is the preventive measure. Next you are going to the treatment. So tre treatment for tumor lysis syndrome. The main treatment here is vigorous hydration with output monitoring. Second, for hyperuricemia treatment because you have to treat individually according to your lab value. For hyperuricemia, you give rasburicase. Rasburicase is nothing but a recombinant urate oxidase. So it is a recombinant urate oxidase which converts uric acid to allantoin. So it is given in the dose of 0.15 to 0.2 mg per kg per day in 50 to 100 ml of NS for 30 minutes and it can be used for 5 days. So mostly it settles by one dose of this allop, uh, I mean raspberry case. That one dose, uh, this liquid of raspberry case contains 1.5 mg. Hmm? The main contraindication to this raspberry case is contraindication for raspberry case is G6PD deficiency. Okay. Third is for hyperphosphatemia. You can use aluminium hydroxide at the dose of 50 to 150 mg per kg per day every 6 hourly. It is a gut phosphate binder. Or you can use civil lemur at the dose of 100 mg per kg per day. It is a uh, in a three divided doses. It is an alternate gut phosphate binder. Okay. Fourth, for hyperkalemia. First, this one everybody knows. You start on with calcium gluconate. Under uh, ECG monitoring, 
it is for this uh, calcium gluconate you give for cardiac stabilization next you give insulin that is regular insulin is given at the dose of i mean insulin dextrose in this regular insulin is given at the dose of 0.1 units per kg along with the dextrose at the dose of 25 ml per sorry 2 ml per kg of 25 percentage dextrose then others are salbutamol nebulization can be done at 0.15 mg per kg fourth you can use sodium bicarbonate at the dose of 1 to 2 milli equivalents per kg next is kaoxalate can be given at the dose of 1 gram per kg every 6 hourly ok this is for hyperkalemia uh, you no need to no need of treatment for hypocalcemia because it is a secondary effect supposing if you have uh, symptoms like arrhythmia seizure then you give calcium gluconate if these are refractory these are if these are refractory to the medical treatment or medical management then you can give renal replacement therapy that is dialysis so renal replacement therapy can be done for the patients who is refractory to medical therapy and those who have aka with oligo or anuria or if they have inability to do hyperhydration like if they have pulmonary edema so inability to hyperhydrate due to pulmonary edema okay so uh, the you have risk stratif stratification for tumor lysis syndrome this risk stratification is mainly done according to the uh, tumor they have so i am not going into the detail of this risk stratification because it is can be classified into three that is high risk intermediate risk and low risk i'll just tell one one point for this for high risk if they have ALL or AML with WBC count of more than or equal to 1 lakh for intermediate risk if they have ALL or Burkitt's lymphoma or lymphoblastic lymphoma it is not satisfying the high risk criteria or if they have AML with WBC count between 25,000 to 1 lakh. In low risk patient, it is AML with WBC count less than 2 lakh, sorry, less than 25,000. Okay. And other non-Hodgkin's lymphoma will come under low risk category. So, how do you monitor in these patients is for high risk patient, monitoring for high risk patients you have to take 8th to 12th hourly blood samples for intermediate risk it is 12 to 24 hourly and for low risk patients at least you have to take the baseline investigations should be done okay this is about the tumor lysis syndrome tomorrow we will talk about the uh, other uh, oncological emergencies like hyperleukocytosis and uh, febrile neutropenia and uh, SVC syndrome. Okay, tomorrow we will cover these topics in part two of oncological emergencies.